Alright, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, yeah, and I hope you lot are all doing well. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video, which is a match review of Chelsea's home win against Liverpool Football Club in the FA Cup. Two goals to nil, a clean sheet, Kepa in goal. Barkley the Scouser scoring against his nemesis team. Everything is looking absolutely lovely. A superb performance from Billy Gilmore in the midfield and just lovely scenes all around. An incredible work rate by Frank Lampard's team. Probably should have scored more, had the better chances out of the two teams and were well worth their win in eliminating Liverpool out of the FA Cup. It's just lovely. Before I dissect this game and get into it, I just want to remind you guys to subscribe to Football Therapy. If you've not already done so, please do hit sub, hit the bell notifications icon, that is important. Why not like the video to help me out? Follow me on Instagram and all the socials, that lot. All right, let's get into it. Okay, 2-0. Goals scored by Willian and Ross Barkley. I'm going to pop up the Who Scored Match Center on the screen now so you can have a look at how the game went statistically and how it ended. Soak it all in. As you can see, Chelsea had more shots, one more aerial duels, one more tackles, got more stuck in. They sat back when they had to, they conceded the lion's share of possession, 58% uh, for Liverpool, but still they did what they had to do to win this game, and boy did they do what they have to do. Right, so Frank Lampard went with this lineup. He restored Kepa Ruta Balaga in goal. Like I said, I thought he would, and if he has a good game, he might get back into the first team. I think my premonition has come true. In the back line, I also predicted that he would start with both Rudiger and Zuma, which he's done. Marcus Alonso keeps his place in the left back position, and as Blaqueta plays in the right back position, Reese James goes to the bench. The midfield consists of Mateo Kovacic, Ross Barkley, and Billy Gilmorino, the Glaswegian Iniesta. Oh my goodness, what first half he had. Anyway, we're going to get into the player performances in just a bit. The front three were Olivier Giroud who was frustrating a lot of the time, but an immense work rate. Again, I'm not going to talk about player performances just yet, but Giroud up front, flanked by the uninspiring Pedro and Willian. <laughs> That's a bit unfair. Willian did score a goal. Pedro did have good work rate, even though he missed a one and one Actually, all the front three missed really good chances. Giroud hit the bar. I think Willian missed a chance. Anyway, I'm digressing. That was the lineup. As you can see on the match centre, Liverpool, the Jürgen Klopp, went with a really strong side, certainly in comparison to what people thought he would have played. He played a couple of kids, but generally as a lot of the first teamers, and by the end of the match, Liverpool had a lot more of their preferred starting 11 on the pitch than Chelsea had. Considering all the first teamers that are out injured, Kante, Pulisic, Hudson-Odoi, Tammy Abraham, um, there is more, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, and of course in this game, Kovacic came off, and Willian, which hamstrung no pun intended, Chelsea even more in this game, yet they saw out a delicious 2-0 win. Willian's goal was, it was, he, it was, there was a lot of good Chelsea moves in this game. Basically, it was an Adrian mistake. It was struck well, but he got his hand to it. And really, Chelsea got lucky with a goalkeeping error. At the other end, meanwhile, Kepa's doing treble save heroics, looking excellent. The second goal comes from Ross Barkley, the scouser, on the break. Everyone thinks he's going to play, and I think it is Pedro, but he doesn't. He keeps the ball, he retains it, he put, pops off an excellent shot, puts it past Adrian. Chelsea get loads of other chances in this game. They're on the break a lot of the time, creating big chances, good goal scoring chances. They have a few free kicks around the box as well. I think Mount hits the crossbar. Alonso has a decent effort. You know, they're really getting a lot of chances, Chelsea. Liverpool don't have any answer. They do look off the boil, but Chelsea did pressure them. An excellent press throughout the game. Superb levels of energy. And they really did take advantage of, I don't know, maybe, I don't want to say Liverpool under pressure because they've won the Premier League, but Liverpool in a dodgy patch. So Chelsea see it out with a clean sheet and the two goals. And like I said, really, they could have scored more goals. So let's talk about player performances then. Kepa Aritha Balaga back in goal. Like I said before, if he gets, comes in this game and performs well, he can be restored to the Chelsea side. I think he may have done just that. I've always maintained on this channel that even though he's been awful this season, I understand why Chelsea are being linked to other players. If you'd watch this channel, you'll know that I always maintain he's a talented goalkeeper, one that just in dismal form, and he used the opportunity today to demonstrate his talent and ability. He had a good game. Alonso at left back also looked very threatening. He won quite a lot of aerial duels, was very 
good for the cause in this game. He did get turned a couple of times, but that's what you get when you play Marcus Alonso at left back. Um, but he was notably positive in a lot of uh, times. He received the ball out wide when he was camped out forward. Again, that's what you get when you've got Marcus Alonso playing left back. He stays forward. He's a threat. Both centre-backs were not overly good. Kind of... The opening few minutes of the game, they both made a high profile error in the space of like two minutes. So I was concerned at the beginning of the game, but I think the team effort defensively was very, very good. And I don't want to like, you know, slag off the defenders, but they, they, weren't, they weren't great and very inspiring in this game, but they did rally like the rest of the team to put in a generally a good defensive performance. As Pelicueta, again, Mr. Consistent at right back, or whenever he plays right back or left back, he puts in a consistent, mature performance. It's just at the point now where Chelsea need to utilize and get the most out of their fullbacks. They need the likes of Reese James and probably a superstar left back, maybe Alex Tellez, more than that tomorrow. Um, yeah, so, uh, but, you know, shout out to Espelicueta, he's consistent and he was good in this game. Billy Gilmorino! The uh, Scottish Iniesta, my goodness, certainly the first half was absolutely imperious from the young man. He's so small, but he is fearless. Give him the ball at any time in whatever situation, not only will he recycle possessions safely and positively, he'll stick a tackle in. He'll win an aerial duel, the dude is tiny, he has got no problem jumping up with Fabinho and beating him to the aerial duel. I could spend minutes waxing lyrical on Billy Gilmore, but I won't, so let's move on. Kovacic was very, very good. Disappointing to see him come off, obviously injured. And another concern for Chelsea's injury list. Uh, he was decent in the first half. He hasn't been like his shining like best, but to be honest, when you're playing next to Billy Gilmore in that form, it's very difficult to shine. Ross Barkley was good. He was always an outlet. He was always getting the ball. People don't understand that. He, because he, he sees a lot of the ball, Barkley, people judge him perhaps negatively when things don't come off, but often he He's in the right place at the right time. Took his goal very, very well, which killed the game off, probably. So that's hugely positive. A couple of wobbles, but generally a very positive performance from Ross Barkley. Front three. Pedro really frustrated me. Okay, so he had, Pedro had a good game, right? He did. He had an amazing work effort. He, he, ethic. he made a recovery, a ball recovery, that I think for the second goal, that was a vital. So he had a very good game. But the thing is with Pedro now, he's a forward and you want your forwards to score. Who thought that Pedro was going to score that one-on-one? -on -one? Because I certainly didn't. And I had no reason to not. He just felt like, yeah, he's not going to score because he retired scoring goals 18 months ago. <laughs> so bless him. Good performance. But, you know... I, I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to thanking him for his service in the summer and being like, be free. Willian wasn't that great either. I mean, he does demonstrate moments of real threatening attacking play in terms of combination in the final third. A bit, bit fortunate with his goal. Obviously came off injured as well, which is worrying. But a good performance. I don't want to like slate a goal scorer. Giroud, man, he was absolutely gassed by the end of this game. <laughs> he had just a few moments when he was like, why did you not play me in? Then he gets a chance when he needs to play a player in and he does not play them in. Uh, really good shift in. Like again, you know, maybe should have had a goal. Got a bit unlucky with that one that hit the crossbar. Might have been offside. Uh, but just a superb effort, and I think he enjoyed his game, which is important. Regardless of no goal, he enjoyed how Chelsea won. He put an amazing shift, loads and loads of running and, you know, fighting and dueling. Superb, imperious, even if no goal. Uh, I don't really want to talk about the subs, really. Jorginho didn't do much. I mean, we looked weaker in the midfield when we changed the personnel. Reese James obviously didn't really do anything. Mount was lively, to be fair, when he came on a bit earlier than the others. Um, probably should have done better when he went through and I think he was on a, he was deemed offside in this chance but I think he might have been level so if he had scored or you know played in Giroud to score that review might have actually given Chelsea the goal in my opinion he did a right mount he just needs another goal or two to really build his confidence back he is a very good player people will see that again soon so yeah Chelsea comprehensively eliminate Liverpool from the FA Cup no treble for them no invincible season for them but still an amazing season for them but this is huge for Chelsea just what they needed obviously they got a massive win against Spurs, a humbling against Bayern, a frustrating result against Bournemouth and now a massive positive and feather to their cap in beating the champions and the champions of Europe and knocking out a very good team selection from Klopp as well. So that's huge for Frank Lampard and Chelsea. So what happens next? Do I expect Chelsea to win the FA Cup? Probably not. I mean, maybe. It depends who's still in it, you know, it's, but or who they're drawn with. But this is hugely impositive. Just looking at this in isolation, this is what Chelsea probably needed. Needed a closer look at the other players maybe like 
We all know Frank Lampard trusts Ross Barkley, sometimes to his detriment, but someone like Billy Gilmore, every single time Billy Gilmore has been given a chance in the first team, he's shone. He's never had a bad game. I've seen him live a couple of times, watched him on the TV a few times. He's amazing, man. He really should start some Premier League games. If, if Kovacic is injured, if, you know, Jorginho is now is suspended for the next game, I think, um, Kante, Loftus-Cheek, uh, Kovacic, Jorginho. Wait, can none of those players play? Anyway, Billy Gilmore absolutely needs a chance now because everyone trusts him. The ball comes to him, he releases it quickly. You feel safe with him in the midfield. <laughs> He's an 18-year-old kid, but I genuinely feel a lot safer with him in the midfield than a lot of other players. Anyway, what do you guys think of this game? Do you think Chelsea can win the FA Cup? Or what do you think of these perform this performance? And uh, who shone for you? Was it like Billy Gilmore, same as me? Um, I would have liked to see Tino Andrin come on. Perhaps if we didn't get the injuries, he might have actually come on. Uh, anyway, what do you guys think? Get down in the comment section below, express your thoughts and opinions on this football match. If you have enjoyed today's content, please do like the video, that helps me out a lot. Remember to sub to Football Therapy. If you're indeed new, new to the channel, I upload Chelsea videos every single day, sometimes twice, so make sure you sub, follow me on all the socials. That's it from me, you lot. Enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life, seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger, like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy, stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.